Ooh, today is gonna be an interesting one. Here's what I'm doing. I'm comparing this MacBook Pro from 2020 versus a custom desktop, which I just built specifically for video editing based on what I've learned lately. This laptop costs me $3,000 Canadian and it's used. Newer similar Max laptops go for around $6,000. They ain't cheap. And as of right now, this desktop costs me around $1,800 Canadian. However, I'm not done the build yet. More on that in a second. The reason I built this computer is because the Puget Systems guys said that the Intel chips have quick sync and are the best CPUs for using with DaVinci Resolve. And if you saw my recent video where I finally realized that Windows computers sucked before at video editing for me because they didn't have the right video encoders and decoders, well, this has launched me down another rabbit hole. Since that's no longer an excuse and this computer has them, I needed to know just how good they really are. See, that's why the Max MacBook Pros are so sick for video editing because of the built-in media engines and they have double the video encoders and decoders of the Pro chips. So that's why you want the Max ones if you're doing video editing. And the encoders on the MacBooks, they just work for everything. ProRes, H.264, H.265. It pretty much doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, Max will be good at video editing the footage. Windows on the other hand, uh... Okay, so the first thing to know before I get into it here today is that I'm recording in 4K60 at H.265. It's a highly compressed, very difficult footage to work on. I'm gonna take a talking head clip like I normally do. I'm gonna show you me editing that same clip on the M1 Max, then again on my new build. But on my new computer, I'm gonna do it twice. A friend of mine gave me his RTX 2070 video card, so I'm going to do a round of video editing with that, then I'm gonna disable it and just use the built-in internal graphics on the motherboard. It's a pretty skook of motherboard too. And the CPU is the i7 14700. And since they say the iGPU or quick sync is what makes the Intel CPUs good at video editing, does that mean it's gonna shred on its own? Let's find out. Oh, just FYI, I only bought 32 gigs of RAM and it has at times seemed like a bottleneck. I did order more RAM and we'll have 64 gigs next week. So I'll make a video about that if it's a big difference. Also, I am planning on getting a newer video card in the near future and maybe that will have a huge impact on the performance. We'll see because I think if I got a $1,200 video card, then it would bring my build total closer to the price of the MacBook Pro. Maybe that would be a better dollar for dollar value test. However, you do need a monitor and peripherals with the desktop, so perhaps this build with the 2070 and my keyboard and mouse and speakers and monitor is a fair test. I'm gonna go fire it up on my MacBook Pro and I'll talk about the results as I'm going through it. And then once I've gone through on each different video editing scenario, I'll come back and share what I think about all the results with you. Let's go. Okay, so here's some footage from my M1 Max. This is talking headshot like I would usually do. And as you can see on the timeline, this is kind of how I edit. I bounce around, I zoom in and out really quick with my scroll wheel, find the little breaths and pauses for the clips, and I snip it, snip it and clip it as we go. So this is really where any type of hesitation or stuttering from the computer is very, very annoying. Now, again, as a reminder, this is in full 4K, straight out of the camera, no proxies. And as you can see, the timeline, I'm editing a full 4K timeline here. Um, yeah, if we open up the activity monitor, you can see nothing's really getting maxed out. The media engines are just doing a good job. It's a smooth experience. It was smooth on the M3 Max, and then when I got the M1 Max, it was almost just as smooth. Minor little pauses, but I'm basically able to edit as fast as I can. It's not perfect, um, but it still looks pretty good. So let's stack a couple clips. I'll shrink one, put it in the top corner here. Let's copy another one. Sometimes I like to do this kind of editing <clears throat> during my videos. Um, and as you can see, the playback's not too shabby throw some text on there just basic text and it's totally fine you know you could still edit it and play back when you pause and move the timeline around it's still running great very impressed with it now let's go to the first clip and create a magic mask because this is usually where with the lack of a gpu let's put it on the overlay select 
the subject, as the pros would say, and here we go. All right, tracking speed, seven frames per second, uh, eight frames per second. That's about as fast as it goes. So it takes, you know, almost a minute to do a, like a 10 second clip uh, with the magic masks, but not too shabby, but it lets you do some fun stuff like this. You know, it's a very cool tool to use and the playback is fine on the Apple. So you know what? The M1 Max on battery, on battery, I'm able to edit 4K from my Sony camera. Um, still happy with the performance. All right, let's switch over. Okay, so this is with um, the GPU, the 2070 turned on. As you can see in the, I've got the Kudo stuff accelerated. And yeah, the scrubbing feels pretty good. In the H.265 on the Windows ones, even with the encoders, it's not... Perfect. It's not like working with uncompressed ProRes footage, but as you can see here, I'm able to clip and snip and, and dance around the timeline um, pretty fast, pretty much as quick as I can move. It's not quite as good as the M1 Max, to be totally honest. I can still zoom in and out, but when I have it, the playhead set to play and I'm clipping around, it just has these little pauses but I'm still able to blast the footage pretty fast. The scrubbing still looks good. I can, I can work, like I said, almost as fast as I can go. Um, we can see here the iGPU is still working really hard. Uh, the pressure has come off a little bit with the NVIDIA one, but um, it's a smooth video editing experience. I think if this is what you're gonna do, this is what I'm doing with most of my newer videos now, it's fine. It's adequate. I'm having a, I, I have a feeling that maybe uh, a 4080 might be a little bit better, but let's do the old stacking footage. Um, I could stack the footage and slide it around smoothly. Uh, let's add in a little bit of text here. You know, the, everything slides around. The playback is, is fine. It starts to bog a little bit down, but it's, it's not too bad. It's, it's definitely doable. It's a decent video editing experience. So let's go over, well, yeah, let's see the playback. I don't have any uh, timeline or workspaces set down to half res or anything like that. So you can see even at full, full res, it's good. All right, let's go over and check out the magic mask. Let's see, surely that's got to be better, right? We're using a graphics card here even though it's not the newest one so right away when we click on toggle mask overlay it's a good sign all right let's see what happens okay kind of as what is expected uh here we go we're getting what 22 23 frames per second it turns this into some pretty short work so editing experience is almost as good as the apple with the 2070 Let's try disabling the video card. Uh, we'll go into resolve and make sure that everything is, okay, there's no NVIDIA there on the decoding options. I turned everything off in the other area as well. And let's see what happens. Okay, that's right. Nothing happens. It can't handle the OBS. So hold on, I have to change gears here. Let me pause this. Okay, so because the onboard couldn't handle it with OBS, it didn't actually show uh, anything working. I actually had to resort to recording the old fashioned way. So here we can see I don't have anything. I've disabled the video card. This is all just plugged directly into the motherboard. And look at that. The scrubbing is actually pretty decent. 4K footage. Um, let's start clipping it, and we quickly start to feel the lack of a video card. So I'm going to open up the, I know it's a little bit uh, overexposed here, but we'll be able to get some data from there. So I'm going to start clipping around. You can just see when I'm scrubbing around on the timeline, it's just, it's not catching up. I don't know if that's the lack of video RAM or what, because um, it's a bit of a big difference from comparing this editing to that of the Apple and that of the even the 2070 as well. 
So let's see. You know, it's it's not doing too bad. I, I'm able to to do it. I think if you changed even just the the timeline resolution to half or a quarter, it would be fine. But that's not the point of this video. I don't I don't want to have to do that. I probably would moving forward if this was my setup. I mean, or just use proxies. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But overall, the video editing experience, the scrubbing isn't as great. Let's try stacking some videos and seeing what happens. Okay. Oh boy. This is a bit of a slideshow here. Look, I can't even drag it up properly because the computer just starts to feel unresponsive. You can see sliding it over, it just takes so long. It's not smooth like it was on the M1 Max. All right, we've got all four. Let's quickly add some text and let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, the memory and the GPU are both just kind of maxing out. It's a bit of a slideshow editing here. This is not an experience that you would want to do for your daily, not a professional workflow at all. All right, let's check out the magic mask. What's going to happen? Let's turn on the toggle the overlay. And where is the overlay? Where is it? Okay, there we go. That's not a good sign. Let's add in my arms here. Click play and track nothing. I had to literally speed up uh, the footage here for quite some time. And there, probably like a minute later, we started and we are getting uh, zero frames per second. So 10 minutes. I mean, we got seven frames per second with the M1 Max. Sure, it didn't match the 23 of the uh, graphics card. And that is unusable. Okay. Well, that was interesting. The M1 Max, years later, is still putting on a clinic when it comes to video editing in DaVinci Resolve. Wow. And not only was the video editing experience better with the footage right out of camera on the MacBook Pro, it was running on battery. This laptop's from 2020, running on battery, beasting through 4K compressed footage like a champ. I mean, if you want a video editing machine, the Max chips are impossible to deny. Now, with that being said, while I have a modern CPU with QuickSync, it's not quite fair to pair it with a six-year-old video card. My testing today really showed me that a video card is absolutely necessary when it comes to video editing in DaVinci Resolve. Is it the VRAM that makes a difference? I'm not sure exactly. Will a 4080 be enough to make this timeline smoother than that of an M1 Max MacBook Pro? I would hope so. See, that's what I really want to find out. But part of me doesn't want to buy a 4080 right now with the 50 series coming just around the corner. And when I get back next week, I might go to Best Buy and try and pick up a 4080 if I'm able to return it because the answer is killing me. Maybe I'll keep it. And I mean, in a perfect world, I would get both maybe the AMD 7800 XT and the 4080 just to test them both out. I just don't have the resources for that. I mean, I kind of have to sell my M1 Max to pay for the video card in the near future. So... I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I got to juggle some stuff. I want to keep it for doing tests like I did today, but I also want that video card to put in my new machine I built. Here's my takeaway. Apple just crushed it with the silicon chips. They make video editing a breeze, and that reason alone was why I switched. It's a no-brainer to recommend the Max chips to people who want the best when it comes to video editing straight out of camera. But lately, I wanted to do some gaming, and you just can't do that with Apple. You can do some, but let's face it, it's not the same thing. With the MacBook, I got a great video editing experience, but limited gaming. With a Windows PC, I get a good video editing experience, but great gaming. And it turns out I'd rather have that. The real question is, can the Windows machine also have great video editing with a better video card? That will be something I'm going to get to the bottom of soon. With other people's videos, they do benchmarks and stuff. I just don't get to see them editing. I don't get to see them working on actual footage. That's what I want to see. So that's what I showed today. Do you like these kinds of tests with real world footage? Let me know in the comments below. This computer I built 
still has a ways to go. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can discover the answer with me when I get there. The answer as to whether or not a beastly PC can compete with Apple's tech of yesterday. <laughs> no, I know there's more to it than that. I just can't believe how good those media engines are on those silicon chips. Will the new Snapdragon X chips be as good as the MacBooks? Man, if I could only get my hands on one of those, I'd love to test that out. As my channel grows, hopefully I'll be able to run cooler tests like that and get access to that kind of gear and, and test it out. Oh, and one more thing I should probably mention is just make proxies. With this new computer, it makes proxies fast. And using proxies is the best way to make your footage and editing experience go super smooth. It's the smartest way to work. I think I saw Casey Ferris say that even though his computer can blast through 4K footage, I'm assuming he has at least a 4090, he still makes proxies to ensure that the video editing experience is just incredibly smooth and fast. In the future, I'll probably do that, but this just reminds me when I got my M3 Max MacBook Pro, editing on that was sweet. My first impressions with the 14th gen i7 is that QuickSync is not as good at whatever Apple is doing. What has your experience been? All right, if you enjoyed today's video, please take a moment to thumbs it up. It's the only way for my channel to grow and get some love in the old algorithm. I would appreciate that. And what did you think about my tests? Were you surprised? Look, I know they weren't super comprehensive. My littlest one barfed this morning at 3 a.m. to 4.30. I'm not going on a lot of sleep here, but I just, I really wanted to get this video up and online. All right, in case you missed my last video, check that out here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Sad Studio. Dad!